Wonder of Goodness Mission. Good to see you all. I'm so thankful to have you all for our silver camp. And we, be, we, think, we are thankful that this will give you hope and faith to each and every one of you who have participated here tonight. Tonight as well, we'll read 2 King chapter 5. If you are there, I'll read from verse 1. Now Naaman, captain of the host of the king of Syria, was a great man with his master and honorable, because by him the Lord had given deliverance unto Syria. He was also a mighty man in valor, but he was a leper. And the Syrians had gone out by companies and had brought away captive out of the land of Israel a little maid, and she waited on Naaman's wife. And she said unto her, Mistress, would God my Lord were with the prophet that is in Samaria? for he would recover him of his leprosy. And one went in and told this Lord, saying, Thus and thus said the maid that is of the land of Israel. And the king of Syria said, Go to, go, and I will send a letter unto the king of Israel. And he departed and took with him ten talents of silver and six thousand pieces of gold and ten changes of raiment. And he brought the letter to the king of Israel, saying, Now when this letter is come unto thee, behold, I have therewith sent Naaman my servant to thee, that thou mayest recover him of his leprosy. Read up to verse 6. When we read the Bible, in the beginning, uh, we may not understand the Bible, but when you keep reading and reading the Bible, when you get into the world of the Bible, there are many stories that describe the heart of man in depth. And when you come to know about the Bible, how, do, how, do, how does man change? Before then, we were living our lives according to our thoughts. But now in our in our hearts we have the th we have our thought we also have the thought given by Satan we also have the thoughts given by God so we can we can come to distinguish all these thoughts. I talked about it many times. I was in Suwon and Daejeon prison. I was there to educate uh, educate the prisoners inmates. But the heart of heart of the people there, I want to I I want to commit theft. This kind this kind of thought arises from their hearts, and or they deceive people. So there are many types of sin. But at the at the center of their heart, hearts, there are two thoughts: no. If I get caught, I'll end up in prison. It'll be I'll be in trouble. So there are th there are this kind of thought that arise from their from their hearts. But when they have the hearts to commit theft, at some point they'll have this kind of thought. They feel they would feel as if even if they commit theft, they wouldn't get caught. If you don't get caught when you commit you, when you commit theft, there will be many people committing theft, but they get they end up getting caught. But when they have the strong desire to steal the, steal, steal the object, they think they tend to think that oh, this time I'm not gonna get caught. If I do this and that, I'm not gonna get caught. So when you talk to the people who are in prison. 
Uh, they, they are those kind of people. Oh, if I do like this, I wouldn't get caught. So it's not only about stealing, it's not only about theft, but even those who play gambling, it's pretty much similar. Uh, if I do the gambling this way, I wouldn't get caught. I'll make money. I'll earn money, they think. If I play gambling this way, I'm not going to lose any money. I'm going to make. I'm going to win money. I'm going to earn earn much money this time. But at the end of losing money, well, I lost money this time. But this time, I'm not. I'm going to win. I feel. I can. I have the feeling. So those who play gambling, they're not just play gambling because they won. You know, because they when they play gambling. They may lose their, they may lose their field, they may lose their land, they may lose their house. But this time, this last time, this last, this one, this last once, if I try it, I'm gonna win the money. But they would still lose the money. It, but those who know how to think, well, last time I felt like I was gonna win the money, but I still lost the money. Then this time too, I feel like winning the money, but I may still lose the money. When they come to think like this, they won't play gambling anymore. But you know, you know, this one's last time I lost the money, but this one's I'm sure that I'm gonna win the money. So playing gambling and committing theft and going to a wrong way. Now those are those who get caught when they committed theft, and those who play gambling to lose their house. So when people, these kind of people, they have this thought, you know, last time I felt like I was I was gonna win the money, but I still lost the money. Then this time too, I feel like I'm gonna win the money, but still I may lose the money. If they come to think this much, they wouldn't play gambling anymore. Those who play gam, those who commit, those who commit theft. They commit theft when they think that if I do it like this, I wouldn't get caught. And those play gamblings, they play gamblings when they think that oh, if this time, this once, if I try it, I'm gonna win the money. Although they feel like they're gonna win, but many times they lose the money. Then those who know how to think, they may think oh, this time I feel like winning, but I may still lose the money like last time. If they come to think this much, they wouldn't play gambling anymore. But they always have this kind of thought that I'm gonna win the money. Like those who commit theft, they will think like, Oh, this time I'm not, I'm not going to get caught. But eventually, as we live our lives, we come across uh, difficulties and problems in our lives. But there are, two, there are always two, kind of thought, two kinds of thoughts. One thought is, there are thoughts that arise from our hearts. And there are also thoughts given by evil spirits. There was a lady... And she said to her friends, you know what, I have, I'm have. i going out with my boyfriend. Oh, really? Oh, you should introduce him to me then. I want to see him. Okay, that's good. You can come to my house, come to my place tonight. I will show, him, I will show you how my boyfriend is. So his, her friend came over to her house. And they were, they were there by 2, but around 10 p.m. in the night, uh, this lady began to talk by herself. Uh, for about an for about an hour, she talked by herself, and after, one hour later, she became silent. Then she, the lady said, la "Lady said to her friends, did you see my boyfriend? No, I didn't. Oh, you're strange. Why? What's so strange? You know, you told me that your boyfriend was coming, but the door has never been opened. But your boyfriend just got into the house. You know, you're just being picky. You know, op the door opening, not opening, it, it, it doesn't even matter. My boyfriend was there anyway." Young, among young people nowadays, when their husbands go to work, there are women women that talk by them by themselves. There are women that talk to the evil spirit all day long to the, until the husband come back. It's rare, but this kind of increasing these days. When they when their husband go to work all day long, they will talk to the evil spirit all day long. And being being deceived by the evil spirit, there are many people who are living that kind of life. So when you think little further, if you think little more, 
Oh, last time I thought I was gonna win the money if I played gamblings, but I lost the money. But this time too, I feel like I'm gonna win the money, but I may still lose the money like last time, so I better not try. When they come to think that much, they will be great people. But you know, but those who play gamblings, they always have this feeling that they're gonna win the money. You know, last time I felt like I was gonna win, but I still lost the money, so you know, because they just think that they want to win the money, that's why they have the feeling. So they end up losing all their possessions, they, lose, they end up losing all their money at the end. So among the, our hearts, there are many thoughts that arise from our hearts, but some thoughts, although the evil spirit is not visible in our eyes, but sometimes these, these thoughts are given by the evil spirit. When I was in Daejeon, one day, there was this young demon-possessed woman. She was demon-possessed and she was suffering because of this demon. And she came, her mother came with, with her daughter who was demon-possessed and she came for the came for a prayer. And there was a there was a vacant room in our church, so I let her stay there with her mother. And any time when I was available, I came to pr I went to pray for her. But one day, I came from outside and I heard somebody crying in the in the church. I heard that noise from the room where she was. And this lady, she was all by herself. She was crying. You know, even young children crying is not very pleasant to hear. But you know, a woman who is in her middle age crying, you know, I I I bet it's not really good to hear everyone. But uh, I so I told her to stay quiet, but she she wasn't very quiet. And about two days later, she got a lot better. So we were able to talk properly. And I and I asked her, "Why did you cry that much that day?" Then she said, "You know, somebody from inside just kept telling me, oh, you know, you are not saved. You have not received forgiveness of sin. You will end up in hell.'" Actually, the voice was supposed to say, Oh, if you're not, you have not received forgiveness of sin, so you should receive forgiveness of sin. Instead of saying that, the voice was saying, You better die now, you better die now. There was an eight, eight ton truck is coming towards you. Jump in, jump in, jump in. So that day, she cried because she may end up get herself killed. So I told her not to listen to that voice. So this kind of story, I know many stories like this. So people consider this to be their thought, but when they come to think more precisely, they can think that there are two types of thought in them. When they come to commit theft, there is this thought wanting to commit theft, especially when they want to commit crime. One of them, one of the thoughts is mine. The other of them is from the evil spirit. Uh, let me let me say something more interesting than this. You know, when we face exactly same situation, when we face exactly same situation, in a certain aspect, it's really unstable. It becomes very trage tragic. But if you see it from other perspective, other aspects, it seems really nice, and it's a good thing. So when you are sad, it's not like you should just be sad. When you are joy, when you are happy, you should. It's not about you. Just you should just be joy ha happy. But if you come to think and differently, if you come to see it from this different perspective, you can see that even in sadness, there are good things that you can find. If you come to learn this kind of things in your spiritual life, yours, your life. If you come to think positively, optimistically, you will be able to live a very bright life. Tonight, we read the word in Second King chapter five. The captain of army of Syria. This was a hero who saved his own his country. He had very high position, he had money, he had a beautiful wife, he had a good wife, and he had authority, but he had a problem. 
that he was a leper. And one day, this this captain, he was in the he was in the country of Syria, and there was war between the country of Israel, and he he went to attack the country of Israel. And the capital of Israel was Samaria, and he went to Samaria to to, to fight the war. And there he found this beautiful little maid, and she caught her as a captive, and brought her to his house so that he would let her wait on her wife. Because her wife was boring at home, so she came, he came back with this little maid so that she may wait on her. So think about it. So it's not a boy, but this is a little maid, a little girl that got caught as a captive. And she's living in the house of the enemy of her country. She cannot run away and hold her life. She will have to serve her ma master who was a leper. She had to do the laundry of her master, which, which was so... Which was, Stained with paws, and she also had to wait on her mistress. She had to do the, she had to prepare food and do the cleaning and dishwashing. You know, this little lady, little, little young girl, she had her family members and in her hometown, her parents, her siblings. She could not go back to her, where she was. She was now living in this her enemy country, and all her life she had to be slave. And uh, what is more, what is worse is that her ma her master was a lep was a leper. This this lady was a believer of God. God, did you did you make made, made up your, did you make up your heart to kill me? Why did I get did I have to get caught here as a captive? Why do I have to be a slave of this leper in this house? God, when would I be able to go back home? Um, I may even get I may even get leprosy. God, I miss my hometown. I miss my parents. I miss my family. I miss my siblings. This young 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 uh, lady, her life, her destiny was so miserable. In the night as she was about to sleep. She could not feel. She could not fall asleep. She missed her parents. She she thought about as her siblings, whether they're doing well. Oh, my parents may miss me. I they they wouldn't even know where I am now. They will miss me too. So she had all these worries, and she would have insomnia, insomnia, and she had all this uh, breaking of nerves. She had all the sufferings in her. But this little maid one day. As she was doing the cleaning and doing the laundry, and one day she came to wash the underwear of her master, and there she saw paws, and she was sure that it, her 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 master had leprosy. And Na Captain Naaman, when this little maid came to know that her master was a leper, this she came to think that oh, this is why. Oh, why did I got why did I got got caught as a captive in now Captain Naaman's house? Why did I get caught as a captive in this house? I didn't know why before. But now I see the leprosy of my master when he goes to Samaria and meet my pro, meet the prophet Elisha. This can be healed any minute. Yes. So God sent me here to heal General Captain Naaman's leprosy. That's why. I should talk about it to my mistress so that my master would go to Samaria and meet the prophet Elisha in Samaria. Then he'll be healed. Let me tell, it to her. Let me tell her this. If my master happens to go to Samaria and meet the prophet Elisha and, he, and he's healed from leprosy and comes back, clean so that will bring so much happiness in this house that will bring so much joy in this house and all the worries in this house will disappear and then they wouldn't consider me as a slave anymore but they would consider me as their daughter let me talk let me tell her this so she was living in her enemy's house and she was a slave she was a she was a maid of her enemy she got caught as a captive. 
But if she only think about if she only thinks about her state, oh, when would I be able to meet my parents? When would I be able to see my siblings? When would I be able to go back home? Oh, if I get if I get if I catch leprosy, what am I gonna do? I don't even have vacations. I don't have I don't even have a day off here. How did I come to be, come to live? How did I come to live this kind of life? Why did I get caught in this leper's house? So that's like despair after despair. She could only face despair. But one day, this little maid in Naaman's house, she was missing her her parents. She was missing her hometown, but she came to know that her master Naaman had leprosy. But at that at that moment, in the heart of this maid servant, she had many many thoughts in her. And she came to think, oh, this is why. God is alive. I'm a believer of God. I'm not even a boy. I'm not even a man. But why was I, why was I in the battlefield? Why did I get caught as a, as a captive? Why was I brought in Captain Naaman's house as a captive? Why didn't God look after me? Why did I? Why did God let this happen? If she thinks this way, it'll be only it'll only be despair. It'll only bring despair in her heart. Ah, there's no point in believing in God. What kind of God is there? I, I, there is no point. It's good for nothing. Everybody else is not caught, but why am I God? Why did I get caught? When would I be able to go back home? She would. She would have days of sadness. But one day, this little maid, as she was washing the underwear of her, her master Nam, and she saw the pause. Ah, oh, yes, now I see. My master Nam has leprosy. That is why he has all this pus in her in his underwear. Ah, uh, that's why there was this kind of this, there was this smell in the house. At that moment, the little maid thought. But you know, if my master comes to meet the prophet Elisha, who is in Samaria, he can be healed any minute. Oh, oh! God could have helped me. God could have protected me, so that I wouldn't get, I wouldn't. So, but if I got caught as a captive in this house, it was not for any other reason. But it was to heal Captain Naaman's leprosy. Maybe that's why I got caught here as as a as a, as a, as a captive. Let me talk about it to my mistress first. She she so she talked about it to her mistress, and the mistress shared it with her her husband. And if my master goes to Samaria and meet the prophet and be healed, how happy he would be. And on our way back, if uh, only on, on his way back, if Captain Naaman hears the word of God from the prophet and receives salvation, he'll be so happy, and we'll be able to have you know prayer meeting. And also, those who want to get promote, those who want to get their promotions, maybe General Captain Naaman will say, those who believe in God, they are the only one who can be promoted. Oh, this is the will of God. In the beginning, this little maid, she was filled up with complaints that she got caught as captive. But when she take a close look at it, if I, I could, I, I could have not gotten here. I could have not uh, gotten caught, got caught. But God sent me here so that I, sh I should, I should talk, talk about it to my master. If my master goes to Samaria and is healed and he comes back clean, then there will be no sadness, no worries, and no. Unhappiness in this house, and they will always praise our God, and they will preach the gospel to the soldiers, and they will say, they will tell them to believe God. So this heart, so this heart, this heart came up to the surface from little maid's heart. Ah, uh, so this is why, so this is why he let me get caught. Also, I should tell him this. Oh, General Naaman, you know, you know how much he'll be happy. How much would he be happy if he get healed? So 
So one day when she, when she took when she saw her, well she's not a you know she doesn't have a mental problems or she's you know she doesn't have any problems but she, she seems to sleep well she seems to stay very well here. Although she doesn't look dumb. One day the mistress said, "Okay, go bring me a cup cup of tea," and she came into her room with a cup of, cup of tea. So did you sleep well last night? Yes, mistress, I slept well. Oh, mistress, if you are if you're okay, I've got I've got something to tell you. You, me, well, what do you want to tell me? If you hear me, you will be you very you you very like it. So can I can I can I talk can I speak talking? Can I start talking? Oh, sure, go ahead. Mistress, me. When I first came here, I didn't know that I was I would be out. I would get. I, would, I never imagined that I would be here as a captive, but from some point on, I wasn't. Ha I wasn't unhappy anymore. But I was happy. General Naman didn't understand why, because this one you got caught as a captive, but you became happier. You say. So what? So what do you mean? Oh, you see, my husband is leper, right? So what? So, mistress, I've got something to tell you about it. You know, being leper, if you go to Samaria in our, in our church, so if he catches leprosy, our prophet will heal him. How do you know? You know, our doctors, they've been, uh, they've met many, they have met uh, many doctors. He met. He's met many doctors, but he was not healed. But you know, the the prophet I'm talking about is the man of God. Has he ever healed any, any leper? No, not so far. But how are you so sure? I saw him raising dead men from death. So he has this power of God in him. So, mistress, think about it. Imagine if your, if your husband, the captain, if he goes to Maria, if, if he comes back not healed, then how would that, how, it will, it will trouble me so much, right? And I'll be the one in trouble. So if I'm telling you this, it's because I'm sure, it's so clear, if he meets the prophet Elisha, he will surely be healed. So, the little girl was so sure that if her master sees the prophet, he will surely be healed. Because if he's not, if he goes there and if he's not healed, then the, the little maid will be in trouble. So she wouldn't even she wouldn't even talk about if he was not to be healed. But he was so sure when he was talking about it. So he was she was a little different from other people because for other people when they when they got when they get caught as a captive. They will have insomnia and they will lose weight and they will look very they look very dark and pale. But anyway, uh, the, the generals talked talked about it too. The, then they brought they called the, the the little girl. So how why did you see the prophet Elisha was healed by leprosy? The little girl said, You know, I know the prophet, and he even raised the dead man from the death. That's why I'm telling you to go and meet the prophet, Master. So when they heard the, the little maid, if he goes there and if he's not healed, then he would even talk about it. But when you saw her talking about it so boldly, he was he was so he, he became so sure. So in the heart of the little maid, they prayed, they prayed God that. Naaman's wife didn't have that faith, but this little maid had the faith. The little faith that the little maid had, this faith was transferred to Naaman's wife. And when it was over, Naaman's wife said, Oh, that's it. 
Oh, so if you go to see the, pro see the prophet in Samaria, you, you will he, he will heal your, you will heal the disease of your husband. So what can I not do? I will. So in the beginning, the little maid had the heart that, knowing that her master was a leper, she had the heart that if my master goes to see my, the prophet who is in Samaria, then he will be healed. So this little girl became very happy thinking about the thought, th having the thought that uh, they will be happy. But in the heart of the little girl, she was not sure if uh, other people were going to get healed. But in the heart of Naaman, in the heart of uh, Naaman's wife, they had no faith. So, this little girl talked about her heart. When we do summer camp, this time we did it online, so we didn't have to go there to the venue. But in Kimcheon, Daedo, we have a big uh, venue for summer camp. And each time we gather about uh, 3,000 people there for the, for the summer retreat, summer camp. But one day when we held summer camp, So that's the picture. Do you see? Do you see the picture there? It's in the middle of the mountain. And the, the, the woods are really nice. So in the venue, they heat up, they they have the heat, they turn on the heating system so that in the winter, the, uh, the participant will sleep, uh, sleep uh, warmly and uh, they, they're going to park the cars on the parking lot. So in the summertime, in the summer camp, in the, in the winter time, uh, the cars, when you leave the car outside for one week, it'll, f it'll froze. But if the, uh, the car with a good performance, it's okay with, with it, it's okay. But the cars, whose cars, cars of which the performance is not good, their battery may get frozen. And, at the, and at, the, at the end of the camp, the cars that are not as good, the batteries will all get fro get frozen, and uh, you wouldn't uh, start, you wouldn't start, you wouldn't function. No matter how much you try to start, start it, but you wouldn't start. But you would just say beep, 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 it would turn off. So what you have to do then, because that happens many times. Uh, our brothers, brothers, who's in, who's in, uh, who's in the, who's in summer, uh, who's in winter camp retreat center, they always uh, walk around with the jumping cable. So they turn on the car next to the car, and they turn, they start it, and when the when when they turn on the car, it also turn the fan belt on, and by that it will it will generate electricity from the car. So this car has a lot of generous electricity, but this this car does not have electricity. So with the jumping cable, we connect it to plus, this plus and that plus, and it, we connect to minus here and minus there with the jumping cable. So that we we connect it, and if you we press on the accelerator, and as you press on the accelerator, and as the as the motor as the engine runs quickly, it generates electricity. And as it runs, it will generate electricity, and through the jumping cable, the electricity will flow to the other engine where it's connected by the jumping cable. Because that car is frozen, so it has no electricity at all. But as this as as, as it's connected, so when you turn on the car, when you start the car. The car will, will start with electricity from the other car, and when you press on the accelerator, as it runs, as it runs the engine, it will generate electricity. So if you keep it for about maybe 10 minutes, it'll it'll produce electricity, and with that electricity, you'll be able to go, you'll go home, and also as you're on your way home, it'll also generate electricity to recharge your battery in your car. So if the electricity is not sufficient, it's it's not sufficient. 
And if the battery is dead, then if you connect the cables, if you connect it with other uh, battery in other car, when they're connected, that's how they can start the car. So it, in each uh, winter, whenever we have winter camp, there there always is this one or two person who, whose car doesn't function. So what I, what I want to talk about tonight is in the heart of the little maid in Naaman's house, she had faith. What faith? She had the faith that if my if my master Naaman goes to the prophet Elisha, he will he will surely be healed. He she had that faith. In the heart of the little maid, she had this faith. But in the heart of Naaman's wife, because she didn't know prophet Elisha. Oh, my husband is a leper. Is a leper. But this little maid knew the prophet, so she could tell that if he could be healed or not. She was sure that if he goes to see them, our prophet Elisha, he will surely be healed. But because uh, uh, Naaman's wife didn't have that faith, what uh, what the little, little maid does is little maid had faith in the prophet, faith in God. So as she was talking with the mistress, she was trying to convey this faith that she had in her to the to the mistress. So when they when they heard the little maid, they were so surprised that the prophet even raised the dead man. So they came to have the faith that oh, then if I meet the, the prophet, the prophet will heal me from the leprosy. Let me ask you this question: Did did Naaman's wife have the faith from the beginning? Please show me through your hands. If if she didn't have, please show me X. If she had faith from the beginning, show me O. Show me X or O. Yeah, she didn't have faith from the beginning. No. But, but at, while she was listening to the little maid, this created this faith in Naaman's wife, in Naaman's wife's house, right? Right? What is amazing is, Naaman's wife had no faith, but in the little maid's house, she had faith. So when they heard uh, little maid precisely, the faith which was in little in the little maid was now transferred to the transferred into the heart of the mistress. So through the faith, Naaman's, Naaman's wife's house and little maid's house, they became one, and they both had the heart that if they come to meet the prophet in Samaria, they, my my husband or my master will be healed. So there was this couple of Naaman. Now the Naaman, Naaman's wife got the faith from the little girl, but Naaman didn't have any faith. But Naaman's wife, as she was talking to Naaman the captain, when Naaman the captain heard from her, his wife, she was, she was like, oh really? So you mean, uh, so if I go to see the prophet in Samaria, then I'll be healed. So this heart which was present in, uh, in, in Naaman's wife will now be conveyed to Naaman. So Naaman had uh, leprosy. Naaman's wife, they were, they were worried and they had no other solution because they uh, he had leprosy and he had paws coming out of his body and he had this smells coming out of his body. So he didn't know what to do. But this little maid, as she got caught as a captive in the house, so God sent the little maid to Naaman's house so that she would talk, she would convey the news to Naaman and Naaman's wife that there is prophet in, prophet Elijah in Samaria who can heal him from the lepers that he has. If they didn't have that faith, Naaman's wife would be like, Oh, no, he's getting worse and worse every day. If, anybody, if, if people get to know that he has leprosy, uh, he may lose his job. Oh, he smells bad. If they had not met the little maid, they would always live in this fear. But the faith which was in the little maid was now transferred to Naaman's wife. And Naaman's wife and Naaman and the little maid, they all had the faith like little maid. So she, so she had the heart that, oh, if my husband goes to see the prophet in Samaria, then he'll be healed. Do you understand? 
So let me continue. So Naaman's wife now had, has faith, but Naaman does he have faith? No, he doesn't have faith yet. So Naaman's wife, honey, oh, are you back from the work? Yes, I'm back. So please have dinner. Oh yeah, I should have dinner. Oh, while you're having dinner, I've got something to tell you. Oh, sure, go ahead and tell me what. Tell me what. Honey, you know what? You know, you know the little maid who was was who came from Israel, that you brought me from Israel. This little maid, she said. In Samaria, there is a great man of God, whose name is Elisha. Really? I think I I think I heard this name before. I think he's very he's a very important one. But honey, you know what? What? This man is a very great man of God. So there is nothing that he cannot do. You know, if you come to meet the prophet Eli prophet Elisha, he can be healed any minute. Oh, you know, how can I be healed? How can a person heal leprosy? Oh, you should go and ask her. So what, Naaman went to, went to see the little maid. Why, why, did you say, why did you say that a leprosy can be healed? Oh, my master, the prophet Elisha is a man of God. You know, he can heal you from leprosy. He even has even have, has risen a dead, dead, dead girl from death. So please go and try. I'm, pretty, I'm sure that you'll come back healed. So let's think about it. Imagine if the if if the if the master goes there and is, he comes back unhealed, then I'll be the one who have who, I'll be the one suffering. So I'm telling you this confidently because I'm sure, so sure of it. So the faith which was it a little made in the beginning was now conveyed to the Nama's wife. And it was existing only in a little maid in Nama's wife. Nama had no faith. But the faith that Naaman's wife got now, as Naaman was listening to her, this faith was also conveyed into the heart of Naaman. If this is true, then it means if I go there, I'll be healed. So he got this heart. So what's the difference between Naaman having the faith that he will be healed and not having the faith? If Naaman has the faith that if Naaman doesn't have the faith that he will, he will, he he will be healed, then he will have to live live a, like a leper whole her, all his life. But when he gets this faith and if I meet the prophet Elisha, I will be healed. Then what would he have done? He would have, he would have gone to Samaria, right? And in order to go there, he went to report it to the king king of Syria, uh, Your Majesty. Uh, I'm very it's very hard to tell you this, but. I caught leprosy. But I heard that if I go to see the prophet Elisha in Samaria, I'll be healed, I heard. So I want to visit Samaria, please. The king of Syria said, Oh, are you sure? Ha <laughs> ha. I'm so happy now. I'm so joyful. I'll write a letter for the king of Israel. Honorable King of Israel. I'm sending you, I'm sending you this letter with the Captain Naaman to Israel in front of in front of you. So when he gets there, please let him, please heal his leprosy that he has with the prophet in Israel. So when he was about to go. Started his journey. The the wife came in and, oh, honey, have a good trip there. And the little girl was like, a general, uh, uh, master, when you come back, you come back with a clean face. I believe. So the captain went up to the chariot with the money that he prepared to give the prophet when he sailed. So he prepared many money, much money. He prepared also ten, ch ten changes of garment raiment. But when he met the king of Samaria, Samaria was very worried. The king of Samaria was very worried, and Elisha saw the king being worried, and said, and said, to the king, 
And at the end, the Naaman came before the prophet Elisha. And Elisha said through the servant that if you go to the river Jordan and wash yourself seven times, you'll be healed. Your skin will be like a little child. I uh, thought he, if he comes, he, they were going to talk and have a little meeting. But he just—he was just told to go to go and wash himself seven times in the river Jordan. And he didn't want it to go there, but because his servant pushed him, he he finally went to the river Jordan. He dipped himself once. He was he was still leper. He went in and came out second time. He was still leper. He went in. Went in third time, fourth time, fifth time, sixth time, seventh times. So he dipped him, dipped himself in the water. And General General Naaman, with his eye closed, and he came back up and asked his servant, "Are you healed? Am I healed?" "Yes, General. Yes, Captain. You're all healed from the liber your leprosy. You're all clean." When he opened his eyes, his body, which was which uh, which was pus flowing, which was very uh, horrible to look at, was now now became very clean and as good as baby skin. I read the Bible, but this Bible is the Word of God. It doesn't mean God wrote it Himself, but the men of God, the servants of God, they heard it from God and they wrote it. This Bible was written for 180 years, 108, uh, 1800 hundreds years. So people who did not meet one another, they wrote the Bible, several people. But there are parts where they wrote about what's going to happen in the future, but they were all accomplished as it was prophesied. And so that's why we call it the Word of God. I had stomach ache, but, after, but in the Bible there was this passage saying, if you pray for it, believe that you have received this. I prayed for it, and really my stomach was healed. When my stomach was not good, I prayed for it. When my heart was not good, I prayed for it, and God healed it all. So God, this little maid had the faith that he'll, she'll be healed. But Naaman's wife had no faith. So we just call it in the Bible, that ha that's ha what it means by having faith. We're having celebrate camp this time. In our church, there are many silvers. And I'm maybe one of the representatives of the silvers. I'm, I'm thinking I'm like the only silver. There are many people, many old people. So God, when we read the Bible, Although we read the same Bible, oh, she got caught as a, she got caught by the enemy, enemy's country, and she is now living as a way made in the house of the enemy. But if she puts her thought only in that way, it's very bad. But when she she got the eyes to see her her situation in different perspective when she saw that her, her master had ne uh, leprosy oh yeah God, so God sent me here to heal the Captain Naaman yeah that leprosy if he, so, you see, he, went, he goes to see a show at Prophet Elisha leprosy that's nothing if I just tell him do that he will be, he'll go and see the Prophet and he will be healed and he will be so happy so he thought about it So he went to Samaria and he met the prophet and he was healed and he came back to his house in, in Syria. And the chariot was still running, but he kind of jumped off his chariot and shouted, Honey, I'm all healed, I'm all healed. And Naaman's wife came and saw the, this here and there, here and there. It was all healed. Honey. They cried and they laughed. They cried again. 
They had this unspeakable, undescribable joy in their hearts. They were so happy that they were healed from the leprosy. So this happiness filled up their hearts. They didn't know what to do. But Naaman saw find a little maid in the house and he hugged her and said, Oh, thank you. You are no longer a servant in our house. You are no longer a maid in our house. You are my daughter. They were so happy. From that day on, she became a daughter to Naaman. Uh, Father, you know what? Today you have to, we have to have Bible studies. We should talk about 2 Kings chapter 5. And they talked about it. And they went to see the king and they reported to the king that he was healed from leprosy. And he said he reported to the king that in Israel there was this true servant of God, Elisha, and through him I was healed from leprosy. So he, he preached the gospel. He gathered all the generals of the army and he said, Maybe you didn't know, but I was a I was a I was a leper. But I went to Samaria and I met the prophet of God and I was healed. So we should all believe in God, he said. So this became a very blessed and happy moment of their lives. So everyone, people may think that they're, in, they're all in the same unhappiness, but when Naaman's maid servant got caught as a captive, she got caught as a captive of the, of the captain who was enemy to her country. So if she, just think, she thinks that way, she would be unhappy all her life. But instead of being unhappy, what's amazing is this little maid, knowing that her master Naaman was a leper, she thought, oh, this is why. In order to heal my master Naaman, in order to save Naaman's soul, the Lord sent me here in this house. I should talk about this to my master. When my master heals, is healed from leprosy, he'll be so happy. He'll be so merry. Even myself, before I was always, I always lived in worries and conflict and difficulties. But when I read the Bible, I could read, read, the, read the story in the Bible that Jesus healed, washed all my stories, all my sins. If I have sin, I'll end up in hell. But because Jesus died on the cross for my sins, I'm all healed, I'm clean, I'm, I'm able to go to heaven now. They were so happy and they were all joyful. So this time, the whole world was difficult because of COVID-19 in year 2020. But one week after our Easter worship service, we held an uh, online Bible seminar. And I gave 11 sermons of 90 minutes. And uh, it was televised worldwide. And a total of 1 billion people, 1 billion uh, people, they saw our sermons. And last Monday, in Chungang Daily, they published an inter my interview that they had with me. And there were so many comments that people left. And I was very touched and moved. Many Christian leaders around the world, they want to, they want to work with us. And uh, Heji Braju, broadcasting station from Brazil, they interviewed me three times. And for the upcoming day, days, he will, they, will, they will try to produce a documentary on my life. They requested it. So... So we we preached the word. We televised it through many broadcasting stations, and there were about five thousand comments left on left on this sermon that we preached. So only talk about how we our sins can be washed, how we can go to heaven. So when you just read the Bible, Leviticus chapter four, Ismael fifty three, Romans chapter six. So there's this. It says there that uh, it says when Jesus died on the cross being crucified and when he shed his blood he was punished for all our sins. So 
So when we, uh, when I took close look, closer look at the Bible, when Jesus died on the cross, when Jesus died on the cross, He was punished for all our sins, and He let us live blessed life. When I was young, I lived a very poor and difficult life. In 1944, I was born in 1944, and I was born uh, while Korea was colonized by Japan. One year after my birth, Korea got, Korea got its independence from Japan. And five years, five years later, the Korean Civil War broke out. 1950, still Korean Civil War, the following year from year 2016, 1951, my mother passed away. One month after my mother passed away, my older brother went to do the military service. So this is still vivid in my memories. And my father worked as a in logistics crew for the or for the army. So in just one night, I, the oldest people of our family, my father, mother, my older, older, oldest, my older brother, elder brother, they all went out of the house. So my mother passed away. My mother, for, my father was gone for logistics. My mother, my brother joined for the army. So I was only eight years old back then. Uh, little girl, my older sister was only 15, was only fifteen. She was the one who was the who, she was the oldest one in our house. And sometime in the middle of the night, when I when I sleep, I would hear this noise. And when I wake up, I would see my older sister crying because she had to feed uh, her siblings. She had to grow them. But because she was young, she didn't know what to do, so she kept crying and crying. And we cried with her. We did that many times. So we, we woke up in the night, and when, when we saw her crying, we cried with her. So four of us, we all cried, and we slept, being tired. And five, about, about five years later, our older brother got discharged from army. Because back then they didn't have a specific time for the ministry service. But anyway, my father was there. Because we were very hungry back then. We lived a very difficult life. I was in the church. I, dig, I dug out potatoes and I stole apples from others' farm. I ate peaches from others' farms. And early early morning, I'll go to church and I'll confess my sins, asking for forgiveness. I'll, I'll, de I'll do that crying, but I'll still commit a sin again. That's how I lived. When I, from that day on, all the worries went away. My sins were true as many as the hairs on my head. It was washed whiter than the snow. The blood of Jesus on the cross. I thought I was going to end up in hell because of all my sins. I was such a person. But my sins were all washed as white as snow by the grace. And that's, a, that's the grace that I tasted in 1962. From the moment when my sins were washed, Jesus became one with me. No matter what difficulties, no matter what problems may occur, the Lord helped me all the time. In 1962, from then on, so I became gospel preacher, and I, I, I finished my course in a mission school, and I went to the army to preach the gospel. I was so happy, and I was very joyful. Although I told many lies, I committed many sins, when Jesus, when Jesus was crucified on the cross, 
there was this story that my sins were all forgiven. I thought I was a sinner. But God, but God said, because Jesus was crucified on the cross, you are all washed. I don't remember your sins anymore. That's the passage I read in the Bible. That was the word of God. From that day on, following the word of Jesus, I lived and I prayed for, prayed for things and I could see how God was answering my prayers and I could see God working uncountable times in my life. So, from, from then on, I didn't do anything special, but how I just talk, I always just talked about how our sins could be washed. But in this field, I was, I was world's best in explaining this. All the other people, they may go to church, but they still call themselves sinners. Some people, they, they may serve God all their life, but at the, at the last moment of their lives, they are captured by the fear because they don't have assurance of their salvation. But when people, they receive salvation after meeting us, they were so happy. Naaman's wife, he, when they met, when they met, when Naaman met the prophet, and when her husband was healed from leprosy, General Naaman, Captain Naaman thought that he would never be healed from leprosy. But hearing the voice of the maid, he thought he became so happy and there was no more sadness. There was joy in, in the house. That's how the, church, that's how the church was, the house was changing. So what God does is so amazing. So from then on, the heart of Jesus comes into our hearts. You know, this evil spirit gives us the heart to commit adultery, commit theft, commit tell lies. But then when the, when the spirit of Jesus comes back in our hearts, it gives us peace, it gives us grace. So this time, even during, the, during our uh, Bible seminar last May, I preached 11 times and then I talked about how our sins are forgiven. And many people received forgiveness of sin and they became one with God. When we have faith before God, when we become one-hearted with God, even if I face difficulties in my life, God will resolve the problem and He will, we will be able to experience His power which resolve all our problems. Although we live the same life, although they may be in the house where they are captured, in the, in the house where the master was a leper, this little maid, she could have caught insomnia and she could have be homesick. She could be homesick. But one day when she heard that, when she got to know that her master was a leper, Oh, this is why God sent me. Uh, I was to heal General Naaman. Then, I should maybe talk about it to our master's wife. And if uh, our master goes to Samaria and he's, if he's healed, he will be so happy that he's healed. He'll be so happy. He'll be so joyful. So his wife, so the little maid talked about it with the mistress, with her mistress, and then she talked, the, the master, mistress talked about it to her husband, and in the end, they went to Samaria and he was healed. How happy he would have been. And receiving salvation, just like that, receiving frames of sin, just like receiving the, receiving the healing from, for, for the leprosy, before knowing how our sins can be forgiven, I lived as a, lived like a sinner. I knew that I shouldn't I shouldn't commit sin, but I went I still went out and I went to you know steal apples, peaches from others' farms. So I couldn't stop it. I couldn't change it, no matter how much I tried. But when I read the Bible, so in. So in Jeremiah, in, in the book, in the Bible, it says that Jesus was crucified on the cross for our sins. So 
So when Jesus died on the cross, he did not die for his own sin, but he died for our sins. So we were supposed to be punished for our sins' sake. We were supposed to face death for our sins. In the heart of the Naaman's wife, she had the heart that my husband Naaman will be healed. So just like in the heart of little maid, if my master goes to see the prophet in Samaria, he will be healed from whatever disease he has. So that's what faith is. So when you come to have the faith, I'm not even Jesus. I'm not even, I'm not even a prophet. So when uh, when they had faith, Naman's, Naman's wife got faith, Naman's, Naman got faith. So to me too, I could see how God was accomplishing and fulfilling His unspeakable grace in my life. I experienced it many, many times in my life. One day, it was after our seminar in Ulsan, I was on my way to Seoul. Uh, we decided to stop by Kumi Church. And sleeping in Kumi Church, I the following morning, I was invited to preach for the morning devotion in Kumi Church. But as I was preaching, I saw some girl, young girl, sitting on the wheelchair right beneath the wall clock. At the end of the word, sermon, I, I accosted her and I, I said, I, I joked, and everybody else is sitting on the wheelchair, or sitting on the chair. But why are you sitting on the wheelchair? Is that fun? But when I said that, she introduced me, in, introduced her to me, to introduced uh, her to me that she was her name was Chesyun, and she was only high schooler, and she said, just a little while ago, you could not she could not feel her legs, and she didn't know why, but she could not feel her legs, and it, that senseless feeling came up from the lower part of the body it came up to the waist part and at the end uh, they were she was told later that she had myelitis because through the spine there is this nerve but when the inflammation uh, inflammation appeared there this kind of cut cut it this kind of cut the nerve there so that's how she had myelitis and the doctor said that she would die lying on the bed and later, the there was no nerve working in her stomach too, so she could not go defecate and she could not go urinate. So they had to extract, uh, extract her urinate urines by machine, and for the for defe defecating, uh, after a couple of days, she had to take her to medicine, and her mother had to press her stomach to push out the push out the feces. So her nine, her 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 age was like a f uh, very young age. She was like a blooming flower at that age, but she was dying. But because I was a pastor, I had to give her faith that she could survive. So that day, so that day I talked for about thirty minutes. Suyeon, please listen to me well. But you know, the electricity can be connected to electric wire. If the electric wire is connected, whether it's a good house, whether it's bad house, whether it's good, good person's house, bad person's house, electricity will flow in, it will run refrigerator and uh, washing machine. You understand what I mean, right? You know, the water in the house flows through the water pipes. Electricity in the house flows through electric wire. But the work of God flows from heart to heart. So, see on your heart, if the heart of Jesus, if they're connected, if the heart flows one another, your problem becomes Jesus' problem, and He will be able to meet it. So, that's, then it becomes nothing. So, when I read the Bible, in the Bible, when God, when Jesus was on this earth, not even once 
did he just pass by the sick man, but he always healed them. And that Jesus may still heal you. When Jesus, when Jesus, when Naaman caught leprosy, uh, the little maid knew that if her, her master Naaman came near the prophet Elisha, he could he could be healed. Naaman thought. And when Naaman followed the word of little maid and went to Samaria, that's when he was healed. Just like that, when she has the faith, her heart, his heart, and her heart will flow in another. So don't forget that Jesus died for your sins' sake and you'll be freed from your sins. Anyway, then Jesus will be able to help you when your heart is connected with Jesus anywhere. Suhyun. So I explained it. And I was busy, so I had to go back up to Seoul. But before going there, I laid my hands on her and I prayed for her. Prayed for her. Suyeon said, after catching Myelet, she was actually praying to receive prayer from me, but she could not come all the way up to Seoul because she could not urinate properly. And they had to extract urinate from the house. So that's why. So Suyeon's parents and Suyeon and Gumi, Gumi Church's father, Gumi Church's parents, Gumi, the pastor of the Gumi Church, they pray to God saying, please God send Pastor Park to our, our Gumi Church. Well, after the seminar in Ulsan Church, on our way up Seoul, we wanted to actually slip in Daegu Church because uh, in the, the church is very near from the IC interchange, but Gumi Church is far uh, far away from the interchange. So we prefer, we prefer slipping in Daegu Church, but the time had passed, so... We had to just move on with it. So that's why Pastor Park, Hishin Park was there back then. And when he, when, he, when he received my call, he said, he said, he, 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 he called Suyeon that day that today Pastor Park is going to stay here. He, he's going to pass tonight. So tomorrow morning, you should come for the morning devotion. I'll hold him so he may not leave early. So when I... When I slept there, when I woke up in the morning, when I took my bag and I went, when I was wanted to go go back, but when I opened my door, I could see that somebody was standing in front of my door. It was Pastor Pastor Hijin Park, and he asked me to preach for the morning devotion. That's when I preached, and as I talked to Suyeon that day, she could have faith, and I prayed for her, and I came back to Seoul. But three months later, I got a letter from Suyeon with a little letters, with a little writing. She wrote a letter. Hello, Pastor Park. I'm Che Suyeon. The doctor said that I had to be lying on the bed. I had to die. But now I walk around. I can stand up. And I'm writing this too myself. So I changed a lot. And she said that the parent family members in the in the house got changed heart their hearts too. And about a month later, she uh Chesion and her parents they came to my office and so so I held her hand and we we, we walked around my office once. So until then, she wasn't perfect in walking by herself. Well, that was around the month of May, but later that later that year, in the in the month of July, we had a world camp, and Suyeon she ran the marathon and she won three hundredth place. So when I think about it, I was very thankful because among the eight hundred people who run the marathon, she won the three hundred three hundred three hundredth place. So when we have faith in God, the work of the heart of God flows in our hearts. And when you have that faith, we can receive the forgiveness of sin. So when you receive the forgiveness of sin, when you are when you are with God, no matter what problems may come in your lives, but God will help you in everything, and God will make your life blessed and glory, uh, glorious. Please, uh, loving silvers, and as you are growing older, you may have less energy, but if you have faith, 
your life will be blessed and glorious, I believe. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you. There is nothing that God cannot do. When you become one hearted with God, and we go, when you go st- take a step forward by faith, the strength, the power of God may come upon us and even heal the lepers. And no matter what problems we may face, we believe that you're, you will help us in that. We're not going to live forever in this world. We're gonna just, we are just spending some time here and then go to your kingdom. So, Father God, we thank you because your, your son Jesus shed his blood on the cross and we believe it's in his blood and we also receive the forgiveness of sin. So, during our stay here, please keep us healthy so that we should also live a blessed life in the kingdom of heaven. Thank you for giving us the silver camp. I, I, th- I deeply thank you for just giving us silver camp. And in Jesus' name I prayed. Amen. Thank you very much.